Hey, hey, hey. What's going on, fellas? We gonna we gonna get a people a minute to jump in before we really get in. So you know, I just let the music play a little bit. Take this time and this opportunity to share it to your page, Whiskey Charlie. Uh Killer Wolf, share it to your page. What's and then going on, fellas? What's going on? You talking to your echo, ain't it? Or you? Yeah, yeah I'm, like, I'm like. Yeah, that must have been when you first came in or something. But anyhow, man, we're going to take this quick minute to go ahead and share it on our page, and then we'll do the official, you know, get into the topic, get into the intro in like the next minute or so. So take that time and do what you need to do. Thank you for tuning in, whoever tuning in, even if that's just one of ourselves. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Shout out to Memorial's Day. Shout out to. Uh oh, hold on, fellas. I got a phone going on, and then I got it uh playing in my background. That's never good. So anyway, shout out to Memorial Day to all the fallen soldiers that lost their life. Shout out to the the people that, you know, has had family members that they lost. Shout out to the civilians that supports Memorial Day. Shout out to civilians who don't even know what Memorial Day mean. They think the holidays is the same. I, I get it, you know, but shout out to the people who do really know, who do really care. And, uh, shout out to people who ain't here no more. So the list goes on for me. I could name whew, maybe seven to ten quickly but uh i just say shout out to the people all my fallen brothers and all the fallen sisters and all the fallen soldiers who not here man on this wonderful memorial day this special day so shout out to y'all make sure you go ahead and uh share this video make sure you comment down below tag in with a happy memorials day or whatever you gotta say Mm, 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 mm. Whiskey Charlie, you look like you over there studying real hard now. Oh yeah, man. You know, I gotta use my toes and my fingers and, and my, remember how to count and everything else. So, you know, all that yeah. good stuff. I gotta get my uh, vibrator turned off here. Okay, I got you. Like this the hell i don't know it's raining it's raining out here pretty good uh in atx right now yeah we're expecting all that rain uh tomorrow for the next like four or five days straight yeah yeah <laughs> Woo. Okay. Later. Tell you what, I uh, last week I went to the uh, little county fair over here. I had a killer time, uh -huh. man. That was some good stuff. Super yeah. expensive as shit, though. I'll tell you that. God damn. Had a good time with the family, though, right? Yeah, that's what matters. Sorry, hey, man. that's what you work all the models for, man. Money come and go. Yep. Yep. That is so true. That is so no, true. As long as you ain't blowing it on no hookers, no scrippers, no shit like that, you blowing it on the family. Mine's all good, baby. Yeah. Nice yes, man. sir. Shit, we just left the little spot, man. Shit, we done drunk two pictures, two pictures of Patron margaritas. And I was like, man, but I got to get back to the show. It's important. My my girl even said, yeah, it's Memorial Day, so y'all damn show need to make sure y'all do the show for Memorial Day, man. So my girl understands the significance of it. Me, myself, you know, um, I don't know. Um, it, it has gotten a little more easier for me today, but when I first got out, man, I used to be a fucking wreck for fucking Memorial Day. You know what I'm saying? But it had gotten a little easier for me, you know, as as the years go on, you learn how to cope with things and <laughs> learn how to deal with things, you know. But but yeah, man, Memorial Day is it's an important day, man. Gladiator Day, basically. You know what I'm saying? What they need to rename it to. 
But yeah, we'll get to that, I guess, you know, once we get to hey, well, hey, Go on, mute yourself. Let's go on and get into it, dear man. I guess I didn't we didn't share it in long enough, and y'all already got a good good conversation rolling, a good topic already building up. So I don't I don't want to hold it up no more. Uh you know what it is. Speak grunt. Hey, and if you haven't went and checked out the, 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 the YouTube page, go check out the YouTube page. Check out that uh new logo that Whiskey Charlie created. I, I think that was gonna be the one that's gonna be there. So it's on the uh YouTube channel and it's also on the Facebook channel. So go check out that Speak Grunt new logo. I think y'all gonna like that. That's dope. But anyways, you know what it is. It's Speak Grunts. Buy grunts, fuck grunts, where everybody welcome, but everybody cannot. And will not be a member, man. You got to hold that certain identifier, that 11B, 0311 for the Marine Corps. You know what it is. You got to be verified and identified to be a part of this tribe. You know what I'm saying? So it's speak grunt. You come through, you speak to us, we speak to you. We talk about some things in life that everybody is finding a way and working through. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. We accomplish the mission. So on this wonderful, wonderful holiday, Memorial Day, where we celebrate you know, the ones that we have lost and the good times and some of the hard times, you know, this is just an opportunity for you to kind of tune in and speak and release your mind. And then I want to talk about something that's that's uh, real to me and talking about milestones on this wonderful day, because as of officially today, it was one year ago that this actually even started anyway. And I started this on Memorial Day's Futter Grunts. So I want to talk about milestones and things that we accomplished on this day as we salute our brothers and our sisters who's fallen that way. But that's it. That's all I got to say. So uh, Whiskey Charlie, what's been going on over there your way? Oh, uh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, having you know, a good time with family. Uh, of course, work, you know, you got to do that to be able to have that fun with the family. So, you know, went to the little county fair, I guess you could say, in and around here, around the area that we live in. Uh, had a good time with the family. Uh, love to see uh, my ch uh, my children smile and have a good time. And, you know, got to feed some farm animals and stuff like that. So that that, that was some good stuff. Uh, then a uh, next door neighbor across the street, uh, his son uh, graduated high school and they threw a big old uh, party and it was uh, pretty live, man. Uh, but they uh, they ended up getting like four hundred pounds of crawfish and it was gone in like four hours. <laughs> Damn, you ain't called me. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't called Louisiana Swamp Boy. Come on, brother. That, that's you left me out to draw on that one. <laughs> oh man, it, it was super fucking good too, man. It was that man. They had a, they had it going, man. They had the, the mushrooms, the sausage, orange slices. Man, they had the whole nine yards up in that thing, man. It was it was some great crawfish, and then uh, got to enjoy some time with the. Uh, and uh, meet some new people, and uh, found some. Uh, of course, he, uh, the young man, so I graduated from uh, high school, and uh, a couple of his buddies was asking me about my military expenses uh, experiences. Of course, with all my flags flying in my front yard, and found a couple of them that they were actually talking about uh, enlisting, and uh, kind of gave them some encouragement, and also some uh, some reality reality and uh, joining the military. So, uh, from my perspective, so yeah, you know, it was it was other than that, just uh, you know, living the dream. That's all right, man. That sounds good. I, I was talking about it earlier when I seen your army shirt. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. You always got your America on, and I seen you posting what your flags on the Facebook and everything like that represent all branches. I think you even had the Coast Guard up there. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty dope, man. Killer. Hey, man, stop watching the TV. You, yeah. Oh, the queen yeah. must be talking to you. My bad, my bad. Um, it was some other shit going on, man, about mass shooting that happened in Miami just now. Well, I think they killed about three people, injured like 20 yeah, in Miami. So yeah, let me get off that. But yeah, um, man, what I've been up to, man, my wife, my daughter, she's still in um Texas right now. My wife go down there, she fly down there Friday to get her. This Friday coming up, um, man, we just been living, man. Um, going to different restaurants, in ATL, um, enjoying our time together, man. I've been, I actually been waking up, bro, and just inhaling. You know what I'm saying? Like being thankful for every day that I wake up. You know what I'm saying? I I I take time now to sit in my back porch, 
and just and just chill, man. You know what I'm saying? Just smell the fresh air, man. I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to enjoy the motherfucking simple things in life. You know what I'm saying? Like walking up the street with your rucksack on your back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sitting in your backyard, breathing. You know what I'm saying? In your backyard, throw a beer back off. You know what I'm saying? Shit that some people can't do. You know, you got motherfuckers locked up, all this shit, but we can do it. People ain't waking up the next day. Just enjoying life, man, and pushing forward, man. Just loving it, bro. That's it. Loving fucking life, and that's it, man. Enjoying family, bro. Hey, hey, man. Uh, Killer Wolf, and I know that, uh, like you said, you're loving life and enjoying life and stuff like that. But, uh, uh, and you know, I know we all had our challenges, though, too. So that's one of the biggest thing, though, to you guys is, you know, you get back from overseas, there's going to be a lot of challenges. But uh, you see, uh, you know, Big Sarge, Killer Wolf over here, and of course me, we all had our own challenges, the own different ways we approach our situations. Uh, of course, uh, you know, work wise, we, we've all went different ways. You have the options. Uh, it's just all how you push yourself. And, uh, I know you pushed yourself when you went through a basic training and situations like that. So, you know, you got, you, you know, base life pretty much like basic training. You're going to, you're going to come across some obstacles, but uh, you can make it through it. So just keep your head up and keep driving. I feel that man. And then that comes with like today, like Memorial day, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to, I'm going to let on um, big Sarge, um, ahead, you know, say his spiel or whatever, how, you know, how you, how you been doing this week and all that. But man, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I just been inhaling, man. I go out every morning and go on my back fucking porch and just take a, a big breath of fresh air, man. You blessed. We woke up, you know what I'm saying? Recognize the, the simple shit in life. You got a roof over your head. You got your family. You know what I'm saying? Some of our brothers don't have that family, all that shit, man. I just been, I don't know, man. I'm on some different shit. <laughs> like, I'm on my grown man shit, man. I, I, a lot of shit don't mean shit to me no more for us. Um, materialistic shit. It's about getting out here and actually enjoying life and recognizing what the fuck life is really about. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what I've been doing, but I'll let you roll. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Killer Wolf, hey, look, and, uh, you know, just to piggyback off what you're saying there, and it goes all into what we're uh, what today is about you guys he was able to do that because you know we all served you know we did our part but we also had our battles we've had people prior to us that served that didn't make it back but uh, they did it for us they not knowing they probably did it for each and every person but they did do the ultimate sacrifice for us by putting their life online and then going over there and, and losing their life and uh i'd like it definitely uh you know uh you know if you get the time you know uh set your head down say a prayer uh if you had to meet a, a widow of a, a military member you know just uh talk to somebody you know uh, talk with them a lot of times they sometimes they just need somebody to talk to and that's even uh current battles you know you know battles that we always need somebody to talk to because it hangs heavy on uh not only just the family members but uh, battles because when we go overseas you guys we, we family we're, we're we're closer than what a lot of their uh people are so uh, definitely, if you got a battle and you know that they lost something that's dear and close to them, and make sure you reach out to them, make sure you uh, let them know that you're there for them too, and uh, make sure that you're there to support. So definitely, uh, make sure you reach out to battles. Uh, you don't have to do it every day, you guys. Uh, that, that's definitely annoying uh, to anybody, but uh, definitely reach out to them. You know, maybe you know once a month or something like that. Just check in on them, let them know. You know, because you know when we all get out, especially when we got back from overseas, there's some battles I've hadn't talked to since then. But there's also times that I sit there and think about uh, about those individuals and wondering how they're doing. You never know how anybody ever copes from that stuff. You are absolutely right. I, I trust me. I, I heard the quiet airways. I was going to jump in there in a minute. I just kind of was sitting back listening to y'all do y'all thing and talk about, you know, Wolf talking about enjoying life and Sutton talking about how his life was and getting out to the county fair and doing what he do and enjoying his family, enjoying his life in that way. My hey, week, my bad for interrupt you again. Hey, Whiskey Charlie, that was a picture perfect moment, man. Your daughter just fucking smiling on that damn ride, yeah. man. They need to put her like on a fucking 
Kodak camera fucking commercial or something. It was it was a Kodak moment, brother. It oh, was yeah, a Kodak yeah. moment, man. So now I'm gonna have to go back on Facebook and I'm gonna have to go look at this picture. Who is it? Siley or Nova Lee? It's Siley. Siley. It's okay. a video, a whole video. Yeah, and she yeah. just having a blast, man. It just it just you it see just, her face. It's, it's what we do it for. You know what I'm saying? When I looked mm -hmm. at my brothers over there. I was like, we all coming the fuck back because I met their kids and shit before we left. You know what I'm saying? It, it's good to see you back, man. You know what I'm saying? I know Smitty did a couple a tour with you, whatever, man. But that's what the fuck we do it for, man. Um, hey, that's straight freedom. If you look at that video there, man, hey, it's some good shit there, man. Y'all had a blast, bro. I'm gonna have to go check that out because I've been. Uh... <laughs> Not really on Facebook in the last three days or so. And besides that, I hadn't really been on there because I've been working on this class that I'm in, this uh, Solo Creator Pro, in order to become better at putting out content, you know, from my lighting, just improving what I do. The message, I got that. I could talk and everything else, but you got to do something attractive to the eye. So I've been learning. And then on top of that, I had to go help my buddy Tank move from the ATX to the SA to San Antonio. And boy, let me tell you, that was, that was a workout to have. We started on Friday at about 11 a.m. And I didn't get home until Saturday night, which would be Sunday morning, about 3 a.m. And then I came home, went to bed, and me and my wife had a couple's dinner to be at yesterday at 3 p.m. And we stayed and did that last night till about 10 p.m. And just kicked it in fellowship. That's why I, we didn't do grunt speak last night. Then I also thought about the, the, the semblance of, okay, I'm going to officially make this a thing right now, whether you like it or not. And that's not to my grunt brothers, but that's to the people watching. Take it how you want to take it. But I'm going to officially make this a thing right now. Since this is the one year anniversary of grunt speak on Memorial's Day, Every year that's about hit the anniversary, we're not going to do it on a Sunday. We're going to do it on that Memorial Day. Every year. So for me, it was kind of like, yeah, it's only a day and then we get to do it again on Memorial Day. What, what better way to celebrate and talk about, like I said, those monumental things. This was a thought last year and now we have full crew doing it. So um back to my week it was a good week you know what i'm saying i got everything done that i said i wanted to do got some some videos to do after i jump off of here like three or four videos to catch up on my solo crow crap class but that's that's light work for me you know it's just doing a, a two three minute video so i'll do that the family's been good man i moved a little bit more furniture today because uh my father who was who i was who was living with me is now living somewhere else, is now living with a family member, a nurse in the family who's, you know, providing care and things like that. So I had to do a lot of rearranging like that, but I still have to take care of all the financial responsibilities, you know, the stuff that Sarge do. So my week has been a normal week of life. Life has been good. I'm, I am big on what Killer has been saying. Like, I don't know if he ever heard me say it, as that's the whole thing. That's where Ruckin came from for me. Just taking the time to slow down and enjoy life, the simple shit. Like I said to people all the time, yo, I wiped my own ass this morning. Life is what? good. Bro. Holy shit. I'm still trying to learn how to do that. I usually <laughs> just rub my ass across the floor like a hey, dog. Matter of fact, bro, <laughs> while we don't talk about wiping ass, look. <laughs> What fucking toilet paper y'all use, man? Because it seems like all the shit stick to me, man. I'm always go back. I'm always go back to the MRE roll, man. <laughs> hey, I, think I, I go ahead, whiskey, Charlie. I straight use my hand in water. That's what I do, man. I just rinse it off. <laughs> hey, I think the Arabic culture rubbed off on you that time you was over there. Bro. Yeah, I, 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 I run through my beard. That's where all of the grays come from. Oh man, if that's the secret to getting grays, I ain't gonna never have none of this <laughs> shit water beer. <laughs> but no, uh, on the uh on the real note, like like Killer Wolf was saying, man, like I like to go out and walk in uh early morning was like nighttime going into daylight because it's just quiet. I enjoy the trees, the peace. You could go back on my Instagrams and stuff. 
I post videos just laying in my tent in my backyard. Like, yo, this is just peaceful. So I get that, man. Slowing down and enjoying life. And then you know what? That also give you time to be creative and think about things that you want to do. Ruckin brought me, you know, uh, grunt talk that then became grunt speak. It became speak grunt and it became a, 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 a rebonding and a rekindling with my brothers, with a brotherhood, something that was missing. Like, I'm not in the army, but the army is still in me. Like, I did this. You know what I'm saying? So now you're getting to be with brothers and talk your talk who understand your talk and brothers who walk the walk and found their way through, man. So life been good for me, man. I, I, shit, life been good. I ain't got nothing really else to say. Life been good. Like, I'm here today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, Big Sarge. Hey, y'all do y'all's walking and y'all's rucking. Uh, I think uh, when it comes to my peaceful time and whatever else is, hey, when I do my yard work, man, that to me it is the most settling thing to my mind. I love just getting up and drinking my straight black coffee and getting out there and just relax. It's relaxing to me. I love just tinkering around the house, man. I just, I just can't help myself, man. I, I got to be Big Sarge. I got to be me. That's just something like a white man to say to you. Want the straight black in me? That's I mean. <laughs> Don't probably put my secrets out there now, damn it. I, I knew it, man. Every time I see some of your pictures, there's some color in the background. Hey, <laughs> let me say this, man. Um, you might not believe it, um, Big Sarge, but I had just started drinking coffee on my Miami trip in April. Um, this guy, man, he he gave me some um Kenya, Kenya yeah. coffee, Kenya mm -hmm. from the um Kenya, mm -hmm. and bro, I got like a whole thing of this shit right over here to my right, and my wife she makes it up for me the cup and shit, and I got hooked. You know Listen. what I'm saying? I ain't drunk coffee even through my military career. Listen, yes, bro, uh, I don't, I don't, claim, I don't claim to be a coffee drinker. But I've been drinking coffee on and off since I was probably a teenager from the gas station to somewhere else. I didn't had the army crud, black coffee when you you know you want one of them movements. I didn't had the mocha float or lattes from Starbucks. Like I didn't, had, I didn't had the coffees, bro. And some this of my, my you know, this my third time in my life drinking coffee. That's what uh, so hey, big so, go ahead. Comment. Down below, look at comments. Yeah, yeah. I, right. That's thank you. I appreciate that, and I've been seeing you going back and forth in the chat, holding it down. So I don't want to miss anybody because we've been going already. And uh, speak grunt. What are we speaking about tonight? We talking about milestones and using this 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 my this big event. I can't think of the word right now. And this momentous event or time frame, one year anniversary of grunt talk to grunt speak to speak grunt, this milestone. And my question was, what are some significant milestones, guys, in your lives from being in the military to now transferring over to civilian? Like, you know, maybe in the military, getting that set, the sham shield, because now you out of the private ranking and you really can kind of get into a mafia, becoming an E5, maybe in the uh, milestone of, getting married or shooter you had a 15 year vow renewal like that's a huge milestone so what do you think when you think back on some milestones from your military career that was a goal at one point in time and you achieved and then also in your life now and briefly if you can i have you do what are some steps that you use to get there so y'all go ahead with that real quick but before you do that let me say something in the chat think about that we have on here, as Justin was saying, as Whiskey Charlie was saying, shout out to Kibby. What's going on for tuning in? We appreciate you. You already know. Shout out to Star Bullet. We appreciate you tuning in. She said, they said, it looks like a she on my picture. No disrespect. They said, have a drink for me. Definitely, we will have a drink for Star. Uh, Dykes, what's going on, Christian? What's going on, sir? Appreciate you tuning in. Yes, it's a sad day today, but we're going to turn this into a celebration because no more am I going to look at death as a sad thing, especially when I believe in the bigger thing. It's just that my brothers gave the ultimate sacrifice. My sisters gave the ultimate sacrifice so they could continue living the better part of their life, getting up here, getting up out of here, getting their wings right. So 
Although the world want to celebrate this as a sad day, I'm going to celebrate this as a celebration because they went out the way that they wanted to. When they signed on that dotted line, they gave the ultimate sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Last person I know that really done that was Christ. So you gave your life up for somebody else. Take it. Think about it how you want to do it for yourself. Anyhow, could be a sad day for some, celebration for others. No disrespect either way. Uh... Kippy, significant milestone in my life was graduating college. I know it was, because I know you weren't the smartest Caucasian guy that I met, Kippy. I, that is very true, so it had to be rough. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm just messing with you. I love you, brother. Um, graduating college. I was a poor high school student, but military clicked with me and helped me concentrate. See? I, I knew it. I, I got it. I got it. Um... Then we have uh, Dykes. So Kibby was college, and y'all can touch on any one of these. And then uh, Christian said, growing from E6 to a second lieutenant was a huge milestone. Yeah, that had to be rough, but that's what made you a good officer then, because the best officers are NCOs first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kibby, Kibby called me a, a, a dick. <laughs> it must have been funny there. You know I love you, brother. But anyhow, so um, shout out to everybody in the chat. We really thank y'all for tuning in. We really, really thank y'all for tuning in. We appreciate that. Uh, we think y'all great sharing the videos and all that. So, and then don't forget, man, drop down in the chat some things that was important to you and your military career that you might want to hear us talk about. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got to play devil's advocate. We got an officer or two that, you know, that looks in here. We want to hear some things that Officer Corps might have dealt with and help us understand some things. We looking to help all grunts at the end of the day. So with that being said, Whiskey Charlie. How about you talk about some significant milestones in, in your life real quick, or would you prefer for Killer Wolf to go first? It, it, it don't matter to me. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, do it, Whiskey Charlie. Just talk about some of the milestones and how you over how you are able to use whatever you use to get through it. Help the people out, man. Hey, I, I would say a significant challenge uh, uh, that I came to while I was in the military was uh, uh, going overseas and coming back from overseas. Uh, you know, yeah. come back, uh, and I would say. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that uh, helped me out to, you know, overcome those obstacles is my battles to my left and to the right of me. Uh, definitely one of those. Uh, that's definitely a big thing for me. Uh, without them, uh, mentally, I probably couldn't have made it. Uh, but we had a lot of uh, NCOs that already had their uh, previous experiences that was there to help uh, kind of support. I think uh, mentally that it was a it was a hardship from that part. Uh, and, uh, you know, willing to admit to that uh, it was a hardship for me, you know, being away from family and friends that long and being all the way over there and knowing that the challenges that we were going to be approaching uh, on a day-to-day -day base. Uh, but outside that, uh, you know, getting back over, over on the, uh, on the real role side, you know, civilian life side, I would say when I got back, I would say it would be been, uh, you know, meet my wife would be, uh, would be another big thing. And then uh, of course, uh, settling, settling into a home, you know, settling to a home. I think that was a, a big, uh, big thing, you know, that, that was a, Something that uh, took took a lot of a uh, took a lot of thought in mind, but now I'm definitely it's uh, been a blessing. That's what's up, man. That 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 is a big thing to come on from my uh, from any deployment, not just Iraq, because you know most of us are young and we leave in America for real, for real, for the first time and don't know what to expect. Your ass go overseas, you realize you for real, for real in the military and what you signed up for. You you about to find out whether you like it or not. You about to earn your pay for real. So yeah, that's a big time significant event, man. To to come back from a huge milestone. Yeah, that's that's a that's a big one there. Like uh, Wolf said, you know, you become a family. I remember being a young corporal. Young as in young, I don't know in numbers, but oh, really? Like I think it was 27. So as a corporal at that age, like in active duty, you like a staff sergeant about to be E7, possible E8 if you fast tracking, you know what I'm saying? So in the National Guard, that's, you know, it, it happens that way at times. But anyhow, I remember telling somebody, my two guys, Piper and Hedger, you know, talking to their parents, just like a regular sergeant or a person like, hey, yeah, well, bring your kids back. We'll see you next time. And, you know, have a good day. And it didn't really hit me that I said what I said, but to make it back and just to have that belief that you're going to make it back, that's a big thing. 
Uh, before I give it over to you, Killer Wolf, I'm going to jump in this chat real quick. Oh, snap. Uh, Kibby being a E6, I do believe. No, he might have been. No. Yeah, he might have been an E7 when he got out. I don't remember. Anyhow. Yeah. Anyhow. Uh, he actually was the one who gave Captain Dykes or Major Dykes. I don't know what he ended at, but Lieutenant Dykes is EIB. Talk about that. That's interesting because in the National Guard, those things didn't come around that often. And I think I remember the time frame it did come around in uh, Michigan before we was going on deployment. So that's pretty dope. And then he turned around and became an officer. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, Kibby said keeping Smith was keeping Smith alive was significant. Not Kibby. You and I both know. <laughs> you and I both know that it wasn't for the black magic. The whole fucking squad would have been dead. We all know that the black guy didn't die in this movie. I was just saving grace. I was like your black knight. I was like a good luck charm for you. That's what I was. But no, that's what's up. We did go through some battles and help each other out. Uh, you were in every station. Kibby said I was his good buddy. They talking about the EIB station, Christian Dykes, uh, fucking with you. Okay, I think I earned that. Uh, hell no. Cool. Anyhow, with that being said, Wolf, tell us about something, man. Something, uh, a milestone in your life that you accomplished, that you set out to accomplish, some great memories that you had from Army perspective to civilian life and then the steps that you took to even get to that point and how somebody else can get through it, bro. Well, let me start with military. Um, I think one of the biggest accomplishments for me was shooting Top Gun and my Bradley crew at PFC. Um, you know what I'm saying? It, it was just something for us um, mounted guys, you know what I'm saying, in Fort Hood to shoot Top Gun and shit. That was, like a, that was like a boost for me, you know what I'm saying? And then actually getting to Iraq and performing the way I was trained. Um, that, that was a milestone too, because we all talk about it and think about that first bullet coming, but we never know how we go actually react in combat. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And me returning fire, you know, Hey, that's what the fuck I was supposed to do. Um, that, that was a big accomplishment for me returning yeah. fire. You know what I'm saying? So that that's the biggest thing, because I ain't going to lie, man. We see we had Bradley Gunners. They froze, man. But um, that, that was like a real big accomplishment for me, actually. Making Top Gun and PLC. Um, actually getting my e, E5 and fucking, what, fucking about three years. E5, um, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was fast-tracking, man. Um, actually getting into a profession – that I didn't know nothing about. Um, the infantry, you know what I'm saying, being a what 17, 18 year old kid mm -hmm. and actually performing on what an infantry man actually was, you know, actually mm -hmm. doing what the fuck I was supposed to do, manning up. Mm -hmm. Shit didn't break me, man. But um another, what is it? Another um accomplishment for me was kind of getting out my severe PTSD state when I first got out the military, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was fucking drinking heavy every fucking day. You know what I'm saying? Like heavy. Um, I was going to fucking all kinds of fucking counseling appointments. Um, all kinds of shit, man. Just, just, just kind of still to be where I'm at right now, still suffering through stages of PTSD, but where I'm at now, still pushing through life that's an accomplishment you know what i'm saying not an accomplishment but it's still no, it's, awesome. we're, it's something that we you know we all still deal with you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying we just learning to live with it if you yeah, yeah. if you feel me awesome. but yeah man that not letting that shit kill me man you know it's it's so much shit bro on memorial day i used to, i used to be my my wife made a post matter of fact she said, I've never seen this man cry except for on Memorial Day and the day we got married. You know what I'm saying? And the day my grandma passed or whatever. So she was like my second mom, man. So, you know, we all deal with this day differently, but I've learned, I've learned how to deal with it now 
on a better way. You know what I'm saying? I learned how to celebrate. Like a lot of couple of the gladiators that I know that passed, it's like um, you know, they was full of life. They was they was already family men. You know what I'm saying? I was an 18 year old knucklehead that like to drink gin and run the streets and shit. These guys that I know, um, the, the guy that I posted on, um, especially the Velez, we lost him in motherfucking Palooza, man. But he had that motherfucking saw gun rocking to the very fucking end, getting his guys out of there. And we got him on the track and shit. It, it, it's, it's, it's crazy, but it, it, I ain't going to get all into that. But um, what else is it, man? Uh, accomplishment in real life? Shit. Being a motherfucking man. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, adjusting to life and its challenges, Um, you know, we all have them. No relationship is perfect for us with our wives and all that. We knuckleheads. We we mostly start all the trouble, you know, with the wives and shit. But um, you know, being a good dad. Yeah. <laughs> being a good dad, um, you know, just shit. Like Whiskey Charlie say, man, opening my first business with my um my physical uh, physical um, you know fitness company and shit on um, my wife she's doing good things on um, we motivating each other now you know um and just you know here's what it is man living life man is an accomplishment um waking up every morning is an accomplishment um not getting in fucking trouble is an accomplishment um you know all this shit man there's a lot of accomplishments man staying out staying out the way not staying out the way, but, you know, in a good way. You know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. But, yeah, man, shit, I think my biggest accomplishment was dealing with this PTSD shit. That's what's, That's what's up. up. That's, that's, uh, that's a very big thing because I know for me, I ain't want to accept that I had it. So when I think about milestones and uh, my military career, just going back into the Army National Guard, really, and completing basic training in AIT was an accomplishment because I started out active duty and I quit during that time frame. That's I can't look at it no other way. I quit because I felt like the decisions that I needed to make for my family was more important than what the Army was talking about. So to go back through basic training and go all the way through, that was a huge accomplishment. And then get into the National Guard and get with a good unit, Alpha First to the 125. That's where I met guys like Kibby. That's why I remember, you know, Dykes from before we went to Echo 125. But so that was a huge accomplishment for me and my military aspect of it. And then as I got further into the Guard, it was kind of like, it seemed like during that time, people wasn't getting promoted. You had to be damn near about to die or retire for somebody to, you know, to give up E5 spots. But when the war, when September 11th came about, then things started to change. And then I started to understand, like, yo, I might be able to get promoted. But it, to be honest with you, it was 10 years in between getting E4 and getting E5. And I ain't going to say it was like all the Army fought. I guess I could have did more schools or whatever because it was on a point system. But when I finally got to E5, it was like, yo, okay, I'm even ready for it now. I ain't just get it because I got the points because that was a lot of bullshit in the guard. Like, he got 800 points, but he don't know fucking Battle Drill 1 or 1 Alpha. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, whatever. But anyhow, knowing that I earned it, you know what I'm saying? And then becoming an E6, and I was like, yo, this is it. I don't need no more than this. Like fulfilling an eight-year contract, then a four-year contract, and then, I mean, an eight-year contract, a six-year contract, and then re-upping for a one-year contract just to go overseas. I'm like, yo, I've accomplished everything that I needed to do, you know, in the infantry. I wasn't at the base of the spear either. I was at the top. I wasn't the point, but I did well. So, it was um it was good and then to be able to give back a lot of knowledge to other soldiers, you know, Wolf, Whiskey, Charlie, to have soldiers that jump on here and be like, yo, Sergeant Smith or Corporal Smith told me this, such and such. Like, yo, that's that's an accomplishment for me because I didn't ever want to be the person who was just talking a bunch of shit and not giving no game back to the youngsters. 
Because I remember meeting old heads that was just talking shit and wasn't giving no game back. Like, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to do that. So to be able to, to do this and, and, and give back is a huge accomplishment for me. You know what I'm saying? Just in the civilian sector of my life, merging my talents that I had in the military to really hold myself to a higher level and get it done. Like then coming back to civilian life and transitioning my life to, to what it is now and what it's becoming. You know what I'm saying? To be to be in there, like with Charlie talking about being with his family, to be with my family, to be with my wife and kids. I don't know what Whiskey Charlie is eating on or what he's doing. He got something in his mouth, but That's what she said. <laughs> no. But in this in this civilian time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, to 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 merge the talents or the strengths that I used in the army to use in my civilian life, which I wasn't doing before, because I was only looking at me as the kid that came from Detroit and the dumb shit I was doing then, which really wasn't that bad. It was just being me, you know what I'm saying? So to get surrounded by brothers who look in that life in a different light, and then to be honest, to, to take everything that I say to everybody else and really reverse engineer and use it on myself, because I have so many thoughts and ideas, you're like, you just giving, giving, giving. But then you start to use it on yourself and you see yourself in a different way. It's just like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I accomplished that of understanding that life is all my responsibility. And really, that's all the army is like the easiest way out of that fucker, whether you like it or not, is to complete your contract. So it's an accomplishment <laughs> just to complete your contract. You, know you got to go mean? balls deep. You got to go balls deep, you guys. You can't just fuck around. OK, yeah. So it's uh, hey, what's going on, sir? Uh, John Van Dusen. That's another officer from i'm not mistaken um i'm, I'm probably yeah a van deucen i remember as an officer but i'm getting mixed up one two five or one four one but anyhow man just being a husband and a father you know what i'm saying like mending the family back together on a civilian side that's a major accomplishment like my my brand my my speaking mr peen and now grunt speak with that i was just on the ruck on Memorial's Day a year ago on one of my eight mile rucks. And I just said, this is something that I want to do. Went home that night and watched the movie, The Outpost. If you ain't watched The Outpost, watch The Outpost. It's based off an of infantry unit in uh, Afghanistan and a fucked up outpost. That's watched a badass. So That's badass, man. I that went was, home like and I watched that movie and that was the first show that I ever did. I talked about it. I looked it up. I, t I attempted to find it, but I didn't look hard enough. So anyhow, those are just some 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 major milestones. You know what I'm saying? Becoming an E5, then becoming an E6, and like on, on some for real, for real shit, skip the army and all that, like becoming a man. Like a man for in the sense of what God tells me a man is or my spiritual authority, higher power tells me a man is. So like just becoming a man and knowing that I'm fulfilling my purpose on life with this, this speaking thing and giving back thing. Like, yo, that to recognize and realize that, bro, that's the beginning of the greatest accomplishment I ever had. Hooligan 3-6. That makes perfect sense. Yes, sir. I remember you now. Anyhow. What you what you what you over there? What you over there conjuring up, Killer Wolf? I see you rubbing your hands together. Y'all both so silent right now. Shit, man. I said I was just sucking in the information you were talking oh, about. Giggity, man. Giggity. Just, just <laughs> listen to what you had going, man. That's all. I, I was just tuned in. That's what's up. What's up. But you know, it's um it's an important thing because sometimes I think as men, especially infantrymen. We always looking at just accomplishing the mission. And although we accomplish the mission a lot of times, sometimes we don't celebrate ourselves. Like I like what Wolf was saying earlier, what Killer was saying earlier. Like I'm just slowing down now and enjoying life. Like I'm just sitting on my back porch, not thinking about putting the fence up, putting the gutter up. Like all those things need to be done. But sometimes as men, we just do busy work, busy work, busy work. And we don't celebrate ourselves like, yo, for real though? I'm still a bad motherfucker. Like I just, I just did three and a half miles. I just bought my wife the new car. You know what I'm saying? Like this stuff I wasn't doing before. So we have to slow down and celebrate ourselves sometimes because you know, on Father's Day, you ain't getting shit but a tie, some socks anyway, or infantry pin. <laughs> like so, you got to celebrate yourself a little more. You know what I'm saying? I think that's an important thing that we need to do. 
And it really, uh, when you do that, when you celebrate you more and you stay on your purpose more, it actually strengthens the family more. I'm reading this book. You know, I like my books, but it's deep. The purpose, I mean, the, uh, the way of superior man. And it asks the question, you know, as a man, if you had to choose between discovering and doing what your purpose is in life, you know, what, whatever you think that thing is, maybe it's fitness for you. And that's the thing that you give back to everybody. Like whatever your purpose is in life, would you do your purpose in life or would you much rather have a intimate relationship and a significant other in your life? Which one would you be more impressed with accomplishing first? And it was like, Real, real talk. Most men in the world, and I think the book was saying it was like over 60 or 70 percent. Most men was like, I would much rather discover my purpose first before I have to discover the whole love and affection thing. That's the um, that's the way it rolls. If you if you don't discover your fucking purpose and who the fuck you is. Ain't no way you could go out here and be in a relationship with nobody. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know who the fuck you are. How the fuck you know who the fuck to pick? Or you know what I'm saying? Or who, who's good for you? You know what I'm saying? And we all have purposes in life, man. Uh, it could be to the lowest total pole to the top, man. But, hey, find that shit and stick with it, man. All this other bullshit, man, be by yourself sometimes. But it ain't always good to just be, you know, the family shit don't work for everybody. Um. Uh, I, I, I need to let some of my brothers know this um, because it didn't work for me the first time. This is my second marriage. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? The shit don't work all the time, man, for us. Um, you know, the first girl you meet, you know what I'm saying? I got my chick from Louisiana. You know, she was a motherfucking mud duck. <laughs> we, you know what I'm saying? We already talked about that, but... What is it? Man, I thought we all discussed this, brother. Oh, okay. Oh, no, but, anyway, anyway. but yeah, you know, the shit don't work, man. It don't mean you bad or she bad. It, it just didn't work. It just fucked up. So let the shit go and be by yourself for a minute before you go jump in some more bullshit. Not bullshit, but jump in another relationship. Learn yourself. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Know. Learn your motherfucking self, man. It took me it took me when she loved me. I was eating McDonald's, had McDonald's in my motherfucking fridge and shit. Eating that shit, warming it up every day. You know what I'm saying? But I discovered myself. I, I discovered how to put them pots and pans together and cook for my motherfucking self and fend for myself. So just so happened I got a wife now that cooks and everything, do everything, you know, that I need done because I know myself now. You know what I'm saying? When, when, whenever you see me and my wife together, it ain't no fake shit going on. We could we could be around people and we that same way when the motherfucking doors close. Period. You know what I'm saying? All this other bullshit. People need to learn their motherfucking selves, man. That's a, that's a that's a huge milestone. Whiskey Charlie, you got something? Nope. So, just uh, nope. sitting here listening to some uh, good advice. That's a huge uh milestone right there because we live in a time and a space where people don't know themselves. The, the 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 television programming tell you who the fuck yourself is that's just really what it is like even becoming an infantryman like turning blue is a big thing turning blue now officially means that i am an infantryman but then you get to your unit they be like you still ain't shit you don't know nothing about being in the infantry. But at different levels, people think certain things. So, yeah, discovering yourself is one of the hugest milestones that you could ever come across. It took me till I was damn near 40 to discover myself, bro, for real. And I was just being honest with myself and, and taking real charge of myself for, like I, you said, about discovering your purpose, what the fuck you want. I had already knew how to cook and clean and all that bullshit, but I had never not been in a relationship. From the time I got in a relationship, I was either cheating with one chick with another i was never single long enough to slow down by myself and find myself because shit the people that i hung around that just wasn't what ourself was doing you know what i'm saying and you lose yourself to the world so 
finding yourself and who you are and discovering what your purpose is, that's probably one of the greatest milestones you could ever accomplish. Like I was telling the people yesterday at the dinner, me and my wife was at, I'm like, you know, I'm kind of at the point to where everything is about the moment for me. Like, they was like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, shit, this moment that I'm, I, this all I got. When I was sitting there eating dinner, that's all I got. Sitting here talking on this camera, that's all I got. If I really believe the way I believe in the higher power and, be, and believe in God, when it's a rap, it's a rap. I don't know it's going to be a rap. But yeah, unconsciously, we tell ourselves what we're going to do tomorrow. We make plans. And you should do that because it's biblical. You know what I'm saying? Give them a plan. But at the same time, don't get so big on that fucking plan that you forget to enjoy the moment because it could be over in the moment's notice. So I'm like, yo, this is all I got. I do make plans for the future to get better, but I don't want to ever get so big of missing the moment. You know what I'm saying? It's 8 billion people in the world. I got this opportunity right now on Memorial Day that three, four, five, six, seven people tuning in and hear what we got to say. So it's like you got to shit it. Eminem, you got to lose yourself in the moment. And when you start to discover who you really are, what you called to do, shit, we all a big Sarge at that point. We all a killer wolf. We all, we ain't all white chocolate, but you know, we all, we all get it done. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's a, a, a big thing, man, what you talking about, just discovering yourself and being who you are and not having to put on a character. When you when you in, in, let me say this. When you discover yourself, you become a superstar. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because can't nobody, you know, you're not imitating nobody. You just being your fucking self. If you're a fucking asshole, be the top line fucking asshole, whoever the fuck you is. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's, what's the dude's name? Simon Powell? What's his Simon name? Powell, Powell, America, Powell. Powell. America Powell. He was an asshole on the thing. He, he's huge now. He was an asshole. Um, what's his name? Um, Hell's Kitchen. He cursed people out in the kitchen and shit. He just being himself, yeah. man. Boy, Boy, man. Man. You know what I'm saying? If that's you, that's you, man. Um, You start being a superstar once you Start living your fucking purpose. Yeah. Yep. And time is going by, bro. You know what I'm saying, bro? I'm about to be yep. 40 here in about three years. So, you know, time rolling, yeah. man. I don't have time to bullshit. Yeah. Find your motherfucking self, man, and, and get with it, man. I think I'll be, what, 40 in about three years. So, you know, hey, find hey, yourself, hey, listen, man. Listen, listen. Get it it's right. All, it's all a number. It don't mean shit because I forget every day that I'm 44. I'll be 50 in six years. And I feel Damn. not, not all physically do I feel every bit of 20 or 30, but enough. Like I'm 44 and I'm still putting on a 40 pound rut, putting in three and a half miles at least three days a week, sometimes seven or eight on the weekend. So it's like that ain't nothing but a number. But hey, they had this comedian. And he made life seem just as fucked up as could be, like short. He was like, um, say you fucking 44. So say you got 20 more summers to live or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. he made it look like that, but he was speaking like, hey, you know, say you 44, say I ain't saying that, but you know what I'm saying? I ain't saying I'm just I just put a number out there. But motherfuckers say, like, hey, I got 25 more summers. You know what I'm saying? Or you know what I'm saying? So you you, you can't look at it like that, but I, I just wanted to spread that word, man. Maybe get some motherfuckers to clicking. Like, hey, you got such and such more summers to live, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So get this shit popping, man. It, it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier for me. It's about that moment. Like, all I got is this moment. I got to. When you working out, bruh, when you at the range and you shooting, when you getting it in, when you, maybe you ain't making love to your wife like that no more. I don't know if some of y'all what you're doing. But when you young, you 18 and you getting with that chick and you trying to do your business, you all in the game. Like you, you would die for this thing. But we don't look at our life that same way. We don't look at that moment that way. So you absolutely right. Like if you. That's why we don't know the time that we have left. But if we look at it like shit, the next the next moment could be my last. So I'm going to live it up. I'm going to start that fitness business. I'm going to be the best 
husband I can be and raise my family the way I see fit for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to be the best speaker I could be, whatever that is. They say, man, if you're doing what you love, you never work a day in your life. Retirement is a trick for suckers. Retirement ain't a real thing. What are you retiring retire from? from? I say, you you want to be what you I love say, look at him. Have, have something to pass to your kids, except for some type of fucking jewelry or some bullshit ass car. Have, have something they have a choice to be like, hey, I don't want to go to college um, or get in debt. So I'm just about to start the family business or, you know, live off some shit that my pops have on these properties. Um, you know, my wife, she inherited the acres, you know what I'm saying, in Texas. Um, that not Dallas. I think somewhere between Dallas, Texas, she got acres up there. You know, her grandma set that in place, and she inherited that. And her people trying to sell the fucking property. Ain't there some shit they selling? They shit. I like. I just pay my taxes every year. I'm not selling no land. Mm -hmm. Y'all sell y'all shit. Do what y'all want to do. But have some shit, man. I live for my child, man. I have one kid. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want something that. When I'm gone, you know, my her her kids could live off shit that I'm putting in place. You know what I'm saying? Her kids past that generational shit. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what we fail as my people, you know what I'm saying? Black folks, we fail at that because we don't create generational wealth. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the most important thing to have generational wealth these days, man. If you ain't got that, your kids be lost, man. When you gone, you gone. Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his fucking hat was his home. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to be thought of as that. I want to be thought of as a real man that actually provided for my family and, you know, man to fuck, fuck up, man. That's just what it is. It's a huge accomplishment. It's a huge milestone. And I, you know, Shit, not just in the African American community, but that's the community that you know the, the spotlight be on sometimes where a lot of us ain't real men because we ain't never seen what the fuck it looked like to be a real man, you know what I'm saying? Especially for me coming up from Detroit urban environments, and but it happens in the white and Hispanic community too. So I feel you 100 percent like uh, accomplishing that goal of being what I believe is a real man based on. You know what my spirit speaks to me is like I was talking to a brother yesterday at the at the couple's dinner. It's like, yo, it's simple. It says it not to be all scriptural, but most people here believe in God. But it's like, yo, it says it. Judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. That's the simple. If a if somebody tell me I am a personal trainer, I expect you to look better than what I look. If you ain't looking like wolf and you looking like the round mouth, you know what I'm saying? We not. Ain't, ain't nothing to talk about. That like <laughs> the tree by the fruit that it bears. I'm not taking marriage advice from a person that's been divorced three times. You can't talk to me about marriage because you ain't did it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's the same thing in, in, in life. Like judge a tree hey, by the fruit that it bears. We're we're spiritual beings. Um, well, absolutely. I don't believe in um the book the way um. The slave master wrote it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, more enslaved my people, but I believe in God. You know what I'm saying? I believe there's an upper power. Uh, we're a spiritual people. You know what I'm saying? All of us have, you know, I think all of us have been here before because we all have deja vu and times that we think that we'd have seen this shit before. Like, like man, I've seen this before. You know what I'm saying? Sometime or another. We're all spiritual beings. This shit, this here is a shell. What's inside of me is spiritual. You know what I'm talking about? So I just think we're all spiritual beings, man. But I think people choose what they want to believe in just because that's that's what man do. You know what I'm saying? They got to have that religion. You know what I'm saying? Man has a religion to them. You know what I'm saying? It's just all about what you believe. And I don't knock anything anybody else believes, but... I don't believe in the book and all that, but I believe it's a high power. I, you know, I, I, if anybody, anybody ever go back and listen to uh, some of my inspirational stuff, I said, like, I believe in God, but I don't believe in everything in the Bible. I don't believe in religion because, again, if I believe anything, 
The Bible ain't perfect, and I'm not an advocate to say that it is, but it's some real simple shit in there where he's not talking about religion. The church is not a building. So it's some things in there that you can see that's just clear, like, oh, okay, what you're talking about don't mean nothing. So it ain't even about just the book because the book that most people follow is the King James version. And King James created his own version of the Bible because the Roman Catholic Church wouldn't let him marry like his little niece or some young underage women. So his followers wouldn't wrote the book, which is the King James version that most people follow. But a lot of people don't know that. But that's a whole nother story. Anyhow. So, yeah, I feel you. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm definitely a spiritual being, and I think I call it God or Yahweh or Yash Yeshua because that's what I was taught, something to identify with. But for me, it's like I don't, I don't see color. I don't see nobody oppressing me or anything else. What I see is if I'm in the spiritual warfare, it's good versus evil. Some people going to be evil. Some people going to be good. You could say the white man oppressed you. Somebody could say the black man oppressed them. We oppressed the Iraqi people, whether we wanted to or not. We considered we was doing our job. So I don't get so wrapped up in that. We didn't oppress some people. Listen, Listen to me. The fucking people are um, no. still doing what they doing. That's why, That's why we. Before biblical days, you know what I'm saying? That they were still believing and dying for their God. You know what I'm saying? They were just. They they do what they want to do, man. Just like um now African Americans have been oppressed for over three, four, five hundred years. And it shows in our of where we at right now as a race on how broken we are. You know what I'm saying? One day fucked up America, 9-11. Just think of hundreds of years of being enslaved and black wall streets, all your shit getting burnt down and you going to fight for a war back then and being told to be sitting in the fucking back of a bus, you know what I'm saying, for hundreds of years. Here's you know thing. what I'm saying? So one day, one day changed America, 9-11. It, everybody was fucking brain fried from that. I wasn't, I wasn't though. though. I'm a, I'm a socialist. socialist. And most I'm people ain't going to like it. Right on right that. that. Any motherfucker that's telling me they're a spiritual being and they believe in something bigger than them and you think remotely in your mind that somebody enslaving you or stopping you from doing anything, I don't know what the fuck you believe in. Let, just, me, let me just I say never, this. Let me, let me, let me finish. Four, I five hundred years <laughs> of <laughs> oppression would do a loop on any fucking race of man bro and That's it's still amazing. and then you gotta think of it like this my grandma was teaching me the bible and shit when i was young the white white person on the motherfucking pictures on the church and shit like that and, and it just goes all the way down bro we was getting yeah. taught the same shit that they was taught back of being slaves Again. you know what i'm saying eating all this bullshit that was discarded. You know what I'm saying? The fucking chitlins, that all the bullshit that we call fucking soul food that's still killing people to this day, black folks. That's and, still and eating this shit. Man. I, 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 I empathize with you. I'm, I'm black. My people from fucking Arkansas and Alabama, okay? They went up north to get jobs. I get all that. But I'm a simple person, bruh. When I say I believe in something greater than what's going on in this world, a spiritual being, and I can do whatever the fuck I want to do, I don't even live in those times of slavery. When people talk about Black History Month to me, miss me with that. It's Black History Month for me every day. How the fuck you going to tell me when I can celebrate me? Like, I don't even get wrapped up in that. To me, in my mind, when I think of enslavement in the Bible, I don't think of color anymore. I think of enslavement and entrapment of the mind. Like, from the let, me, of the let, house, me, let me say this. I'm not. I'm let, me, let me say this, man. We, you know, look. We're going to take the eye out of this shit and put us as a, a race. Again. Again. You know Again. what I'm saying? You, you could say, like, like I could say, um, to soldiers, hey, get the fuck on, man. I don't about to hit this puss ass shit you're talking about, PTSD, all this other shit. Get over it. 
You know I what I'm saying? I, I did. Still. But as a race, the shit, the shit fucked up, man. That's, 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 that's just all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not I'm, saying, not saying. I'm not disagreeing with you that it's not, and not to get so far off topic. What I'm saying is, is just as we could talk about it's fucked up, we could talk about how to get better. We get so wrapped up and talk about what's fucked up and what happened to us, people don't want to talk about moving on. If that was the case, bro, you were still being bad rules doing the dumb shit you was doing before you even decided to join the military. If you wanted to talk about what's happening to you, as black people, we need to take responsibility for some dumb shit that we do. That's just real. You ain't got to like it. It's the truth, bro. It's the truth. And that goes for every race, every person. We don't accomplish milestones or we don't have memories of being a good father or a good mother because, because we, we become, become that, that father. Father. But hey, when we still living on um the laws of what they call our, our founded fathers that was racist in this country, Move. What, what how the fuck are we moving forward if we're Move. not change, if we're not changing any laws, if we're not changing any judicial systems or uh, anything? So how are we moving on from anything? I never, I never said, said we, were we were moving, moving on. on. What I'm saying is I choose not to live in the past. That's like me coming to your house and asking you where your CD player at. You don't have one. So why do I have to continue to talk about what happened in the past when clearly for the past hundred years we've been talking about, about this shit ain't changing? Change because, because the past the fucked up our future. No, no the, the future and the fucked up people's future. Because they chose to live in the past. You, you chose, chose to get the fuck out of that place, even though I chose, but I'm just being real, man. And, and, you, if yeah. you look at it, if you look at it now, we're debating about bullshit because you had a, a motherfucking white dude kneel on a motherfucking person, a black dude neck, and we're debating that this guy probably get about five years for. I'm never debating. Debating. And then look here, we we're Americans. I I came from here. My fucking people came from here. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Louisiana motherfucking Southern boy. You know what I'm saying? So move for what? I fought for this fucking country. I built this motherfucker. What the fuck I'm going to move for? You know what I'm talking about? If, if, if you can say that, man, like how the fuck we talk about the past, we can't talk about the future. You know what I'm saying? Because the past fucks up the future. That's yes, exactly yes, you have, you to, have understand to understand where you come from, but understanding where you come from doesn't have to stop where you're going. I know I'm learning what the problem is, is a lot of us black people, we don't know where we come from. So we only have the story that was given to us. And most of us don't research. And a lot of the stories that we get is hurt and trauma, whether your family and ancestors were slaves or not. Most of us identify with that because we black without doing real research. It was black people that had slaves. I'm not denying the bullshit that happens that goes on. But if we don't understand in 2021 that America is not a fucking country of by the people for the people. America is a corporation. If you make green backs, we don't color the we don't care about the color of skin on your back. Some but people need to press more. more. That's just what it is. I think but that, 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 that I think that, that, every America should be every America should be treated equally. You don't you want to live in the real world. world then. Then. You you you, every, are, you don't every want to live American, in the real world. That's not that's real. real. That's that's, that's, that's not, not real. real. But why is it not real that this, one race is treated better than another race? Listen to me. You only talk about your being based on America. What do you think North Korea says about South Korea? What do you, what do you think, think about they feeling they feeling like like us too. America, America just made it out of the fucking black guys getting beat down on you. Yes, you know, you down But how much of this overcoming you still here? Bro, I'm just flashlighting the shit that's still going on here, bro. I get that, but what is the solution? That's my main The solution is... You want me to tell you? Yeah. yeah. The solution is to change the judicial board. You have um top judicial um judges that stays on the fucking board until they die. Who, 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 who votes, votes for that? that? 
You know what I'm saying? Change the whole thing. Hold up. The judicial, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's how you change it. Um, this person gets the same thing as this person gets. No, it's not, it's mean. not about um, hey, if the judge feel this way, I'ma give him this that day. So, you know what I'm saying? So right? change the judi judicial system for They're one. Not. What what you say? They're not. They're not. But I'm saying you want to add, tell me how to you you want me to tell you how to change it. I'm telling yeah. you. Okay, okay. Change the judicial system. Um, let's see what else. Um, take the immunity away from these cops. Okay, okay. I think they should be held like soldiers. We're held to a high standard as civilians, right? So why yeah. the fuck cops got a badge to do what the fuck they want to do? They have immunity to do what the fuck they want to do. So. If you're a bad apple, which a lot of cops ain't, but they have them, you're going to you're gonna know that, hey, I have immunity, so I can go do what the fuck I want to do. Take that away. You know what I'm saying? Uh, put in um, school programs in these um, bad-ass, fucked-up neighborhoods that we grew up in. You know what I'm saying? Give um, jobs, you know what I'm saying, to these communities. Job training, skill training. You know what I'm saying? All this shit, man. There's a lot of shit that could change. Them right there could change. change what's going on. It's a, lot, a lot of things that could change. And a lot of things that you mentioned that you speak of, I can remember as a kid having them in my city. But here's the thing. We don't have that now. We, we asking for stuff that we ain't ever got. That's how I just feel as an African-American person, as a black person sometimes. We still talking about stuff that people ain't talking about giving, and we the only ones still there when everybody else moving the fuck forward. But we can stand in line for Jays and MacBooks and iPhones, like bro, you uh, get it. Oppression is there. The, the they broken, is man. The 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 broken, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, they broken. Everybody ain't like me and you, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying we yeah, move, we move forward. But that's, that's, that's just trying to say, those hey. That's all I wanted to say, man. I don't want to get in no spill on this shit, man. But no, that's what I want to say, say I mean, about I mean, it. You know, that's what it is. No, no I, I think I, it, I, it is because, because it's, a it's, valuable, valuable. it's a valuable point. You opened it up. It's not just on a color thing. It's like you can take that whole concept and think of it about it from a military aspect, from a soldier aspect. When you go on deployments and all the if you got a MFO event and like I was in Egypt, 04, Dallas or Denver, Broncos, Chimney, everybody man. ain't soldiers, man. You know everybody ain't so. Everybody ain't got all mindset, man. <laughs> Some soldiers so, so, don't have the so, mindset you have. And that's why I think we said something earlier in the show about the television programming. I tell you what you need to believe and what you should believe. If you don't believe nothing different about you, you don't change. So that's why you have to talk about the milestones and the memories that helped to shape and give you your name. Whiskey Charlie, what you over there thinking about? I know you didn't fell asleep on us. What you got? Oh, not a whole lot, man. Hey, look, uh, that was a quite a bit of a subject I touched on there. But uh, my my only uh, thing is to say on that is uh, that. Uh, you know, there's never going to be a common ground when it comes to a whole lot of things. There's there's a lot of uh, injustice when it comes to a lot of situations. And the reason why there's not going to be ever a common ground, there's too many beliefs in what's right and what's wrong. Yep. There's too many, too many beliefs. I mean, yep. look, what, what I believe in, hey, what Killer Wolf believes in, what Big Sarge y'all are talking back and forth on. Y'all had y'all's uh, slight differences in there, but you also believe in the same thing. But uh, there's too many uh, differences in the world. There's too many religions. Too many uh, things out there that's it's just ne never going to a common ground. You would literally have to separate yourself into organizations or to a race or a, such like that. Uh, if, if you're going to, to come to a common ground that everybody agrees on the same thing. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's shitty because you hey, feel like you know, I just, is I just wanted a common ground that we all be treated the same. Black yeah. folks. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Asians, um, they got a law that protects them from anything after they just been you know, they've been yeah. fucking with ages since the coronavirus, Listen, but it, right. they got a law that passed immediately for them. Let me, let me, let me say that. You know, so why, and I wanna, why the fuck should I fucking be like, oh, I'd have fought for this country and shit. Oh, I just need to deal with this. This just how it's going to be. Yeah, that shit bullshit. Here's the thing. But hey, I'll let y'all roll with you don't, it. You don't. Let me, and I want to be real clear. 
you don't got to just deal with shit. You know what I'm saying? It's been portrayed over and over again. I don't deal with a motherfucking thing because okay, I, I don't deal with a lot of the motherfuckers. I don't deal with a lot of motherfuckers that's with the bullshit. You know what I'm talking about? I'm on this little show right now, but on uh, real spit, man. You know, I'm I'm killer wolf at the end of the day. Okay, so I don't deal with none of that bullshit for my, us. Um, my, my, my whole point, point is, is you're, you're, you're you're saying, saying you kill a wolf. You gonna make the decision to do it the fuck you gotta do no matter what. The but hey, everybody, everybody, everybody ain't me though, man. I'm not I'm saying, not saying so everybody as a race, me. as a race, I think that you know it's certain shit the judicial system get get changed, and these cops have their little immunity and shit revoked. And of course, we need to point out the shit that goes on in our fucking neighborhoods, backyards, and shit too. And then I think it'll be a whole different world, man. Hey, you can't ask nobody else to come in your house to clean up if you ain't gonna clean up your fucking self. That's just period. We already know you can say, say what you want to say. Hey, we gotta look for the motherfuckers that's looked out supposed to protect us that we call to do their fucking jobs. Hey man, hey, man. I don't but hey, I, I see, I see where we're going. Yeah, I'll, peace. God go with it. I, I don't even know what all that means, and I don't know if you really know if you see where I'm going. Um, I don't know if I see where you going. I, I have, have my own thoughts. I don't see that's that shit at all. Other, I don't see nothing. nothing you talk about. I don't, I don't, no, 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 I don't really see nothing what none of y'all motherfuckers talking about. That's a whole other topic, a whole other conversation. The, the, the show today is Milestones and Memories. Yeah, one year anniversary of Grunt Speak. Brothers had differences of opinions, but you got to listen long enough to understand somebody pointing an opinion. And that, that's just what it is. That's that's just what it is. Buy grunts, fuck grunts. Speak your mind all the time because it's what you speak in your mind that sets you free. That's all you can do, man. Whiskey Charlie, you got something to say before we go? Hey, you guys. Hey, just uh, like I said before, the uh, I mean, a lot of y'all probably uh, already all uh, laying down napping there. If you're not and you're watching us still, hey, man, just take a moment, uh, uh, say a prayer. Uh, and, uh, man, keep your head up. Uh, yeah, we all have lost someone, uh, in some type of way, but, uh, you got to keep your head up strong because they did it for you. And, uh, and when they did it for you, they want you to go out there. I see a lot of people posting like, Hey, you ain't supposed to be, you know, uh, thanking a veteran or this, that, and the other, which I understand certain people feel certain situations about that. But look, you guys, uh, for the guys out the people out there having a good time celebrating, look, that's exactly what any other of my battles that's passed or whatever else would want you to do is enjoy your life. I know that uh killer wolf was talking about that earlier. He's enjoying his life. You know what? Our battles did it for us to do this. You guys. So go out there, you know, just take a slight moment out and just remember that there are people out there that did this for you to enjoy that barbecue, to enjoy that uh, beach trip, to enjoy your family time. You know, there was somebody that did that for you. And uh, all you can do is, uh, you know, uh, you know, just take a, a spare moment and uh, just, you know, think about the ones that have fallen for us and just remember them. That's what's up. That is what this day is about. Memorial Day and that and, and the holiday traditional way celebrating the men and the women that we lost and that uh, important it means to you. And, you know, maybe on this day you have some type of milestone or something that you accomplish some memories, not just bad memories, good memories of your soldier, too. You know what I'm saying? So. Something to help you get through this day, you know, speaking to grunts and grunt speaking. That's what we're attempting to do to get you to speak to. And as you can see, it's conversations that get touchy and things that you have to go through in order to grow through. But, hey, that's the only way you get to a better version of you or else you're just doing what everybody else wants you to do. Killer, you got something to say before we go away? All right, peace. That's all we got to say. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. We'll see y'all next week on Speak Grunt. Speak me.